If you're feeling confused or overwhelmed by all of the different output connections on your mixer, I'm here to help you in this video. We're gonna take a look at some of the most common types of outputs, and I'll help you understand when you might use each one by passing along a simple analogy that I found very useful when I was first getting started. The most common type of output you'll find on almost every mixer is the main left and right output. All of the input channels on your mixer can be routed to the main outputs using the input channel faders to determine the level of each channel. Typically, there will be a master fader or knob in the bottom right corner of your mixer that controls the overall level that comes out of those main outputs. The main outputs can be used in a variety of ways, depending on what you're doing. In a live situation with only one pair of main speakers, the main outputs could be used to send signal to those main speakers. The main outputs could also be used when recording several inputs and mixing them down into a stereo tape machine or audio interface. There are really an infinite number of ways that you can use the main outputs, but the most important thing to know is that the main outputs will usually reflect the signal passing through the master fader. Let's say you want to record several microphones all to separate tracks within your DAW. That way you'll have individual control of each instrument later while mixing. Rather than using the main outputs, you'll probably want to use the direct outputs for each channel. The direct output will output the signal directly after the preamp, meaning that it's not affected by the EQ, the compression, or the other effects on the mixer. The channel fader also won't affect the direct outputs. This is a really good solution if you want to run a live show using the controls on the mixer, while preserving a clean recording of each input signal that can be mixed later on. The only adjustment on the mixer that will affect the direct output is the preamp knob on each channel. One of the most versatile types of outputs that you'll find on an audio console is the aux or auxiliary output. You can determine how much of each channel is routed to the auxiliary output using the aux send on each channel. Then you can control the overall output level of the aux output using the aux master fader or the aux master knob. You can think of an aux as a secondary main output. Some consoles allow you to select between pre-fader and post-fader. A pre-fader aux send won't be affected by the position of the channel fader, while a post-fader aux send will. Just like main outputs, aux outputs can be used in infinite ways. One of the most common ways to use an auxiliary channel is for sending signals to stage monitors. Stage monitors are the speakers that point toward the musicians on stage, which enable them to hear the other musicians and themselves. If your console has four auxes, for example, each one could feed a speaker in front of each musician. That way, you can send each input to each musician on stage at the level that suits their individual needs. Another way to use an aux output is for effects like reverb and delay. Rather than putting a reverb processor on every individual channel, you can connect one reverb to an aux output and connect the output of that reverb to an effects return channel. Now you just need to send each input channel to that aux with the aux sends. This will allow you to have cohesive reverb sound for every instrument while maintaining control over how much reverb is applied to each channel. Now these are just two examples, but there are endless possibilities. Some more advanced mixers will have matrix outputs, which are a bit more difficult to understand at first. When I was an intern at a live sound company, one of my mentors told me this analogy which I found very helpful for understanding what a matrix does. He said, think of each input channel as a passenger. Each passenger can travel on a bus, like an auxiliary bus or a main mix bus. He then told me to think of a matrix as a ferry, which in addition to carrying passengers, carries buses to their destinations. Thinking of it this way really helped me understand the difference between an aux and a matrix. You can usually only send individual input channels to an aux output, but a matrix is helpful when you want to send several auxes, which contain several inputs themselves, to a single output. Let me give you an example of a situation where this might be helpful. Let's say you're mixing a live show that has several zones of speakers. You may have main speakers beside the stage, front fill speakers at the front of the stage, delay speakers midway through the audience, and some speakers in a VIP tent backstage. You want the main mix to be routed to all of these speakers, but each speaker requires different EQ settings, level control, and delay time to maintain an even sound throughout all of the zones. To do this, you could connect each zone of speakers to its own matrix output. This could allow the main mix to be a matrix input, which could be routed to each of those zones. 
Hit the like button if this video was helpful and watch the video on your screen for more tips on choosing and operating a mixer. I'll see you there.